admit it, you thought I wasn't coming back. Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Well, the projects that I've made in the past have been big, and this one is no exception. I've ran into a little problem with organization for my sheet goods, so I'm going to solve that today. It's going to be a plywood sheet goods storage cart. Be stored off to the side of my table saw. It can be rolled around with four inch casters and ready to put up against the wall when I'm not using it. It will also hold scrap wood along the side so it'll make it easy for any cutoffs that I have from the table saw. And the cool part is it's going to be quick and easy to do DIY style with pocket screws. We're going to burn through a bunch of batteries so I've got several charging. Let's get this thing kicked off. Boom! There's one thing that I can suggest that you invest in is a sheet goods mover. This thing is worth its weight in gold. First, we're gonna make the roll around cart. It's going to be the length of a sheet of plywood and 31 inches wide. Now we're just gonna cut some six and a half inch squares for some mounting blocks for those casters. Alright, now if that's done, let's go out and cut the sides. Alright, now what I have is three quarter inch pieces of plywood. I've got two of them, they're clamped together, all flush, all the way around. I've already done some pre-marking here. I've measured 30 inches from one bottom and 20 inches from the other end, and then I've drawn a line. I've also scribed it with a utility knife to prevent any splintering as I run the circular saw up the line. Now we're just going to take this piece and cut it down to 48 inches and use this for the back or the side or however you want to look at it. All right, now, this is the back. It's 31 inches wide by 48 inches tall, and we're doing some pre-marking right now that's going to be 30 inches from the bottom and then 16 inches from the side, and then this section right here is going to get cut out. This is going to be on the plywood sheet goods side. This right here is for my scrap bin side. And just as before, we're going to scribe a line with a utility knife blade just to make sure that we don't get any tear out when we run the circular saw over. Okay, now there is an insane amount of pocket screws that are going to go into this. So we're bringing our pocket screw jig and uh, just attaching it on the bottom and then we're gonna do the sides. Okay, now I just need to make some dividers for the uh, scrap bins. Yep, you guessed it. More pocket holes. Jay, can I borrow your foreman for a little bit? Holy crap, that's a lot of pocket screws. And I've still got more to go. I'm here to tell you, this upright is the hardest to put on. Okay, now putting this thing together, you might have to think about a good battle plan. Originally, I thought the pocket screws would go on the inside and I would uh, go about putting it in that way. Um, but the problem is if I stood up the other upright like this one, I wouldn't be able to get to the pocket screws all the way back here, so I had to kind of rethink my strategy, so I put the pocket holes on the outside and uh, put that upright in. The other upright, the pocket screws will be facing me, so I can put them in this way. The shelves will all be facing the right way. The hardest part is going to be getting the face on um, this way, because uh, I'm going to have just about 15 or so inches in between uh, the face as well as this upper upright, so getting my drill in there might be a little difficult, but gonna have to do it somehow. Now when putting these other uprights in, because you don't have a square edge to reference off of like I do on the end, you need to make sure that you are square not only up and down, but also front to back. So having a huge speed square like this, maybe even two of them, work well. 
Almost done. And hey, if you find this kind of stuff fascinating, I suggest you subscribe to my channel. I try and have new woodworking videos out each and every week. Stuff like this you won't want to miss. Now, because I have this certain section of the face that's uh, got to be flush with this particular upright, and it's kind of bulky, I'm going to go ahead and attach this upright to the face and then take the face to the cabinet. Okay, there's the front face. Now, as you can see, this cutout is the exact same as what was on the end. I didn't show you how to cut this because it was all the same, just apply the same thing. So now, I just need to screw it down. Again. Okay, that's it. Now the hard part. How in the world am I gonna get it down off my assembly table? <laughs> now, if some of you are wondering why I assembled this on my table, uh, the weather outside hadn't exactly been great. And uh, it was very, very windy. That would have sucked. Now where this is going is over there where all that junk is at. So I've got to kind of clear that out. Now I've had this big box of dowel rods and the only place that I could put it was right over there. So now that I've got these really tall empty bins, they're perfect. Also some of my long jigs like this uh, joiner fence, my sacrificial fence, they can all fit in this really big end capper that I've got. Even my Gargantuan planer bed can fit in here. Well, that certainly helped the scrap bin problem with the cardboard box situation. <laughs> now, let's throw some sheet goods in here. All right, that held everything. I am very happy with this thing, so but as far as the pocket hole plywood cart with scrap bins, it's done. Now, if I ever bring sheet goods home, I can just back the truck up. Well, once the pallets are done <laughs> and, and gone, uh, I can just back the truck up right here, pull this cart out where the plywood bay is exposed and then just load them in. And then when I'm done, push it back. All right, now just to give you an idea for all the pocket screws that I put in here, I started with 100, I'm left with seven. <laughs> I might have done a little overkill, but it works great. Now, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Also, there will be a written tutorial blog for my first one on my website. Uh, there'll be plenty of pictures, step-by-step -step instructions, so if you don't, a video watcher, you'll probably like the blog instead. As far as this project goes, I'm done, it's done, and my pocket hole jig is really done. So, I will see you guys next week. Take care. Be sure and check out my website. Boom!